Hey, greetings and welcome to my channel. I'm a high school astronomy teacher that is actively using AI products in the classroom, and I want to share some of the cool uses I have found for AI products. In this episode, I'm going to introduce you into ChatGPT basics. I'm going to cover the login and the interface and demonstrate some of its uses. So what is ChatGPT? ChatGPT belongs to a set of AIs called large language models, okay, with learned memory. LLMs are trained, and they're not really programmed, they're trained on enormously large sets of data, which include things like web content, books and articles, conversational data, social media, etc. Now, LLMs utilize the predictive text algorithm to literally predict the next word or token in a conversation or document. Now, according to ChatGPT itself, this has opened up an enormous amount of emergent properties. For example, text generation. Okay, question and answering, summarization, uh, conversational AI, creative tasks, etc. So all of these tasks are now possible through a large language model like ChatGTP. Now, let's start off with the concept that ChatGPT is not just a chatbot. Okay, I found my AI uses kind of fall into three categories. I use ChatGPT a lot as a research assistant, proofread my work, fact check my work. Um, help me find ideas. I don't use Google to do research anymore. All research I do now is on ChatGPT. ChatGPT does also is a document generator. It can generate any kind of document that you could type instructions into. For example, lesson plans, Kahoot questions, curriculum development. I use it to make an AI use contract for my students, timelines, assessments, etc. These documents are what you can do with ChatGPT to enhance your classroom. And lastly, it is a little bit of a chatbot, but it is, I couldn't be a tutor. You can ask it to help you study for SATs. I'm using it to help me learn Python. You can set it up to teach your students how to study for exams in a prompt I call Study Buddy. Or you could start your own YouTube channel. I could not have started this channel without the help of my AI. Now, Let's keep in mind the limitations of AI. They are far from perfect. They can produce wildly wrong results. And AIs are limited to, by their data set. As of this recording, um, ChatGPT only has access to facts prior to 2021. Uh, you always have to remember that AIs lack real world experience and common sense. And AIs may have offenses biases from their data sets and their trainings. That's something we're always on the lookout for. So for me, I consider uh, my AI as a remote teacher, an intern that I supervise. I must be aware that my intern has no world real experience and can be cringy wrong sometime. So you have to proof your AI's work. So to get started, in this video, we're going to go to ChatGPT. I'm gonna show you how to set up and log into it. I'm gonna describe the basics of the user interface. I'm going to show you how to use the chat history feature, and I'm gonna give you some simple prompts you can do to get started with your adventure in AI. So let's go ahead and engage our AI. And, but before we do, please like, share, and subscribe, and comment um, on my video. All right, let's engage the AI. Okay, let's go ahead and start at the beginning. Hey, if you guys wanna make um, liberal use of your fast forward button, Feel free to do to, so, you're not gonna hurt my feelings any. Um, but let's start with how to get to the ChatGPT login. Now, in my Google login here, you'll see all this stuff down here. These are suggestions of where my um, text might take me. These are predictive text algorithms themselves, one of the simplest forms of the AI that ChatGPT uses. So we're gonna go to ChatGPT login, okay? Open ChatGPT login, and we're gonna start right here. Okay, so now you should have this screen. We're gonna go ahead and sign up. Now, ChatGPT uses a third-party authorization to, um, process. It does not share your phone number, it does not save your phone number, it just wants to make sure that you're a human being. So, you will have to have a phone number to connect. So go ahead and um, hit either continue with Google or continue with your email, and you'll go through that login process, okay, which will ask for your phone number and your birthday, etc. So go ahead and go through that process and then connect to the GPT interface. So welcome to the ChatGPT interface. 
Now here in the center, you probably have a bunch of boxes, okay? These tell you different things that you can do, different limitations of ChatGPT. If you want to get rid of those, you can just hit the new chat button. Now, down here we have the prompt box. This allows me to put in information into ChatGPT to generate my content. Now I've got this little yellow plus, a little bit different than what you have, but this allows me to change the model. This is a subscription service between default, legacy, and ChatGPT4. ChatGPT4 is a lot slower, but it is better in terms of reasoning and conciseness. We're going to use default value ChatGPT 3.5 because that's the free version that's going on right now. Now down here you have by your name or actually your email address, you can click this and you can toggle between light and dark mode. Okay, um, light mode of course gives you a more bright background, whereas if you want to use the dark mode, which I'm going to use, you can select that as well. Now here on the left we have different conversations that I have had with ChatGPT okay over the weeks here you may not have a chat history yet but this chat history kind of acts like a short-term memory it's kind of like saying hey chat GPT remember when we were talking about helium before hydrogen I can reload that conversation and start from there now here's an example of some of the things that you can do with um, chat GPT I'm gonna just kind of show you through my chat history um, let's take this first prompt um, AI in the classroom my prompt was to proofread and fact check and then I just cut and paste my first slide in okay my first slide and it found some errors okay it says AI should be written as um, um, AI without the periods okay as it is an abbreviation form of artificial intelligence consider capitalizing high school it's a, as is a proper noun etc so these are ideas that chat GPT has asked me how I can improve my first slide so this is one of the ways that I use ChatGPT to fact check and proofread my work. Now another primary use I have for ChatGPT is to create documents and reference materials for my classroom. So for example, uh, I'm going to load up a prompt that I knew it did to create a table about what happened during the first moments of the Big Bang. Okay, I just put in the prompt, we are creating a reference table for ninth grade science um, students on the Big Bang. And it put together a reference chart that I can now use as a handout in my classroom. This is what I refer to as, as ChatGPT being a document generator. Okay, it can generate documents such as this. It could also generate documents uh, for assessments, etc. Now, a third way that I use the AI products is as a tutor and teacher, both for myself and for my students. So, for example, I have put together a prompt to help me learn Python. We're going through a process here. You're going to help me learn Python. I have limited programming experience. So now ChatGTP is going to act as my tutor and teach me how to do type Python. And I can do the same thing for my students as well. I can say, help me with this learning criteria. Help me with this topic. Help me with this standard. All of these things can be done as, as a chatbot, as a teacher tutor. So for myself, to understand the potential and the creativity and how AI works, I think the thing that helped me the most was creating um, imaginative stories. So I'm going to write a prompt here. Let's start with a new chat. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. Um, and we're going to start a new chat. And I'm just going to paste in a prompt. Write a story about an imaginary meeting between Newton and Einstein. There's a disagreement over the nature of gravity. Okay, so this is a story that maybe I'll turn into a handout. I don't know. We'll see how it turns out. But this is a way to kind of get a feel for how AI works. So it's going to Isaac Newton and Albert Einstein were two of the greatest minds in human history. And now it is writing me a document based on um, an imaginary meeting. So this gives you an idea of how you can operate AI to create content. So I suggest you play around with this a little bit. If you don't like your story, change the names. Now there's a couple different ways you can edit your prompt or edit your story. I'm going to start by maybe editing my prompt. Okay, and write a story about an imaginary meeting between Newton and Einstein. There is a angry, angry disagreement um, um, over the nature of gravity. Now it'll rewrite that story with a little more anger into it. So that's one way, some one way you can change your story. Now another way you can do it is down here. You could actually say, ah, I'd like to change it a little bit. This time I'd like to do in Spanish, please. 
And now you can rewrite your story, okay, in Spanish. This is really handy, of course, if you are going to use this material in a classroom that has um, uh, multilingual students. So what I would suggest you do is just go through this process, put in some prompts, edit them, change your text, and learn about the capabilities of ChatGPT. Now let's go ahead and wrap things up. So I showed you some of the ways that I'm using ChatGPT personally and in the classroom. Um, I use it as a research assistant, preparing presentations, summarizing articles, searching for reference materials. Um, ChatGPT can use as a document generator. It generates great assessment questions, really helpful in developing your curriculum. And it will actually take YouTubes and summarize them. So you can use ChatGPT as a document generator in that regards. And then of course we do kind of use it as a chatbot, as a teacher. You can help use it to help prepare for exams, learn to read a new language, learn any kind of new skill like Python programming or YouTube channels. Well, we learned. Uh, we learned how to find and log into ChatGPT. We learned how to navigate the ChatGPT 3.5 interface. We learned how to use the chat history feature. And we learned how to use ChatGPT as a research assistant, as a document generator, and as a tutor. I showed you how to use simple prompts to write imaginative stories so you can explore the potential of ChatGPT. I really hope you liked what you learned today, and I hope it made your life um, more productive. And if it has, please like, share, subscribe, and comment um, on today's video. Thanks again.